So this is the screw feeder assembly for the Eagle machines. The screws go in the vibrating bowl. When the bowl vibrates, the screws come around the ramp and drop into the, the output slide. They transfer from there into the ramp assembly. They, they line up in the ramp assembly. When the ramp assembly has enough screws in it, which means it covers this first photo eye, then the rotary device down here rotates around, picks up six screws, and then comes up to the home position and waits for the screws to be asked for. When the machine asks for screws, the top plate of the rotary escapement device backs up and it drops all six screws into these hoses. And then when the hinge is applied, uh, the there's air that blows up through the manifold and down through the hoses to blow the screws up to the head. When you first turn the screw feeder on, the first thing that will happen is it checks to see if there are screws in the ramp. The rotary device will rotate around one full revolution to make sure that it's full of screws. Now it's at the home position and it's ready to run. When the hinge applicator calls for a set of screws, it'll back up, drop the screws, and then go forward again, picking up six more screws, and the vibrating bowl will run and refill the ramp. The photo eyes in the ramp, this is the minimum photo eye and this is the maximum photo eye. It will not rotate and pick up screws unless the minimum photo eye is covered, letting us know that we have at least the minimum number of screws to fill the, the rotary device. The, the bowl will continue to vibrate and fill the ramp until it covers the maximum photo eye, and then a, a few seconds after that to be sure that we have a full ramp of screws before it shuts off. When the maximum photo eye is clear again, the bowl will vibrate again to try and fill it up to maximum. When the hinge applicator calls for a set of screws, first thing it'll do is it'll blow the screws out of the hoses that are already there into the head. Then the escapement device will back up, dropping this set of screws into the hoses, and then it'll rotate around and pick up another set of screws. So there are two covers. The ramp has a cover over it. We have a quick snap catch there. We can remove that cover to access the screws in the ramp. There's another quick snap on the end so we can pull the clear plastic sheet cover off like that. So we can access the top of the escapement device and the ramp. To remove the screws from the rotary escapement device and the ramp, the system has a vacuum unit on it the vacuum on and then we can we can easily remove all of the screws from the escapement device and the ramp. We'll easily remove all the screws from the ramp, the rotary escapement device. The vacuum unit can also be used to remove the screws from the bowl when you're changing the color of the screws. So as the screws slide down the ramp, they slide on the edges of these wear surfaces right here. Right. They, the screws will wear out the wear surfaces and they will need to be replaced at some point. They're held on with the three screws here. Uh, very simple to replace. The spacing between the two the spacing between the two plates is critical. It needs to be correct for the screw size. Each of the screw feeders, the clear plastic cover that comes off from here, has an edge that's been cut down to a specific dimension. That dimension is the dimension that should be between the two plates when you put the new plates on. When the escapement device stops in the home position, it needs to be lined up with the exit screw. As you can see there, as we look down through the hole, you can see that the rotary device is lined up with the exit tube. We accomplish that with the home sensor. We put this on, this sensor right here is looking for the edge of that hole. These two screws right here 
are in slotted holes and we can move the sensor left and right to stop it in a slightly different rotary location. We want the screw holes to be lined up or just a little bit advanced. From the output slide of the bowl into the ramp on the screw feeder. The spacing and the height is critical. The height of this, the output ramp, should be just slightly below the bowl ramp. It also needs to be very close this way so that the screw, when it comes up there, can fall across and transfer to the ramp. If the spacing is too close, then the vibrating bowl and the vibrating ramp will hit against each other and it'll attenuate the vibrations and the screws won't move as fast as they should. If the gap is too large, then the screws can fall into the gap and jam up. To adjust the position of the bowl relative to the ramp, we have these tabs here. The bowl has uh, rubber feet on it, and the rubber feet set into the round holes in these tabs, and these tabs are adjustable. So we adjust the, the two tabs so that when I set the bowl rubber feet into the tabs, it's aligned correctly with the exit ramp. We can also adjust the spacing between the two ramps with these three bolts at the bottom to slide the bracket in and out and the height by adjusting these two bolts to raise it up and down and change its angle slightly. So we use a vacuum unit to evacuate the screws from the system for color change. So we'll turn the vacuum on. The vacuum unit will suck the screws out of the bowl. When all the screws are out, we'll replace the hose. The screws are deposited in the plastic tray inside. 